So this is the second video that I have on reading and using Stata output and in this particular video I'm going to explain you how to read this table. Basically this is the table that we call the ANOVA table. Okay. If you want to understand that how to read this and how to read this information that we have then there is a separate video on that. So first watch that video if you are not clear with this table and this particular information that's given over here. Okay, so in this video, I will focus on the ANOVA and I will also talk about this last thing that we have over here because I did not talk about this in my last video. So I'm going to talk about root MSE and this ANOVA table. So first, let's get started with the ANOVA table. So over here, we have SS written over here. This SS is sum of squares. Okay, so this is sum of squares. Okay, and this is model. So basically this number that you see over here, this is model sum of squares and model sum of squares is something that you can also call explained sum of squares. So the notation that we have for explained sum of squares is ESS. Some textbooks also write it as SSE. Okay, so whatever you are comfortable with, you can use that notation. But this is your explained sum of squares. And then this is residual SS. That means this number that you see over here, this is your residual sum of squares. The notation that we have for the residual sum of squares is RSS. Some textbooks also write it as SSR. And this over here, this number 63506 this is your total sum of squares, which is actually the sum of your explained sum of squares and your residual sum of squares. Okay, so in this particular column, you are given the sum of squares. Now let's move to the next column. In the next column, you have DF. DF stands for degrees of freedom. Okay, so over here, let's start with this. So 73 is your degrees of freedom of TSS, that means total sum of squares. So degrees of freedom of your total sum of squares, the formula to calculate this is n minus 1. So n means your sample size. So whatever your sample size is, your degrees of freedom of TSS is 1 less than the sample size. Over here, you can see that number of observations is equal to 74. So this is your value of n. This is your sample size. So because sample size is equal to 74, the degrees of freedom of total sum of squares is n minus 1. So this is equal to 74 minus 1 and this is equal to 73, right? Now let's talk about this. This is your degrees of freedom of RSS. So degrees of freedom of RSS. The formula to calculate the degrees of freedom of RSS is n minus the total number of parameters that you have in the model. So n minus the total number of parameters that you have in the model. Note that I'm not saying n minus the total number of variables. So for example, in this particular case, I have taken price as my dependent variable and MPG as my independent variable. So my simple linear regression equation will be price equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 MPG, right, plus error. So over here, what are the number of parameters that we have in this equation? 2. So beta 1 is one parameter and beta 2 is your other parameter. So the number of parameters are 2. That means the degrees of freedom of RSS is going to be n minus 2 and n is equal to 74. So that means this will become 74 minus 2 and that's why you see 2 over here. I'm repeating this once again that degrees of freedom of RSS is not n minus total number of independent variables. Many students do this mistake. They write degrees of freedom of RSS as n minus total number of independent variables. That would be wrong because the total number of independent variables that you have is only one in this particular case. Okay, so that's not the right formula. The degrees of freedom of RSS is n minus total number of parameters. And when we say total number of parameters, we also include the intercept parameter. Okay, so intercept parameter as well as the slope parameters, right? So this is your degrees of freedom of RSS. And now see, it's quite simple to figure out the degrees of freedom of this, which is ESS. Well, we know that degrees of freedom of your TSS is going to be the sum of degrees of freedom of RSS plus the degrees of freedom of your ESS. So if you are able to figure out two of these, you can easily figure out the third one. So in this case, we know the degrees of freedom of TSS is 73. The degrees of freedom of RSS is 72. That means the degrees of freedom of ESS definitely has to be one, okay? So that it adds up, right? So now the last column that we have is MS. MS means your mean sum of squares. And to find the mean sum of squares, we do the sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So this column is SS divided by DF. Okay, so this number that you see over here, this is 
something that you get when you divide this explained sum of squares by the degrees of freedom of explained sum of squares. So the degrees of freedom of explained sum of squares is one only. So this number does not even change. This second number that you see over here, this is something that you get when you divide your residual sum of squares by the degrees of freedom of residual sum of squares. Okay. So this is your residual sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom of residual sum of squares. And similarly, this number that you see over here, this is your total sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom of total sum of squares, which is this. Okay. Now see this particular number that we have over here, which we got by doing RSS divided by your degrees of freedom of RSS. Okay. So this number is actually an important number. This is what you call your sigma hat square. Okay. Now, depending on the textbook you are following, you may see sigma hat square or you may see s square, but this is what we have for sigma hat square. So, RSS is nothing but your summation of ui hat square. Okay. So, summation of ui hat square and degrees of freedom of RSS, we have already discussed what is that. So, when you divide these two, you get sigma hat square or s square. So, this number over here is giving you that. Now, what's the linkage between this number and this root MSC over here? Well, this root MSC is your under root of that particular number. So, this root MSC that you see over here, this is just your under root of that particular number, which is 6883554.48. So, when you take the under root of that number, you get root mean squared error, which is this. Okay. Root means you have to take the under root of that. This is how you can remember it. So that's the linkage. If I give you root MSC and if I do not give you this number over here, you know that you can just square it and get this number. Or we can also go the other way around. If I just give you this number and do not give you root MSC, then you just have to take the under root of this number and you'll be able to figure out the root MSC. Now, the last thing that I want to cover in this particular video is that this R squared. Okay. So we know that R square is a measure of goodness of it. But let's say if I do not give you this value of R square, then there is enough information in the ANOVA table to figure out this R square on your own. Basically, what is R square? R square is your explained sum of squares divided by your total sum of squares. And the ANOVA table is actually telling you what is explained sum of squares and what is total sum of squares. So explained sum of square is this number 13944974. And your total sum of squares is 63506.5396. When you divide these two, you will be able to get your value of R square. Okay. So I hope this is clear that how to read the ANOVA table and how it's linking to some of the values that you have over here. Okay. So that's it for this video.